Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the aims and organization of health systems. By the time you finish this session, you should be able to speak comfortably about the aims of a health system, articulate, articulate different forms that health systems take, note and note the roles of different levels of health systems, and the special place within health systems of primary care. Let's start with some vignettes. Ananta is a young child in a small town in the far west of a very low-income country. Ananta came down with a high fever, cough, and seemed to be short of breath. His parents wanted to seek help for him, but the nearest government clinic was many hours' walk from their home. In addition, they weren't sure when they got there whether or not the clinic would be open, whether or not the staff would be there, and whether or not they would have any drugs to help treat the child. Princess is a young mother in a lower middle income country in Africa. She's pregnant and she seeks antenatal care. In the last few years, her country has improved its health system, the financing of the health system, and provided an increasing number of people with health insurance. In addition, they've changed the way such care is paid for, and Princess is now quite comfortable seeking care knowing that she can afford it. These stories highlight the importance of a country's having an effective and efficient health system, and a health system that also protects people from the costs of health care. So let's delve further into the work of health systems by speaking about first, what is a health system? What's the definition of a health system? And the World Health Organization says health system is all the activities whose primary purpose is to promote, restore, and or maintain health, or it's the people, institutions, and resources arranged together in accordance with established policies to improve the health of the population they serve while responding to people's legitimate expectations and protecting them against the cost of ill health through a variety of activities whose primary intent is to improve health. It's a little bit long, but I think you get the main point is that's a range of activities which in principle work together in the most coherent way to enable the good health of their people in effective and efficient ways while protecting them from the social or financial costs of health delivered in ways that are non-responsive or too expensive for the people to afford. Now let's speak further about what the goals are of a health system. And let's first ask our students uh, what they might expect of the health systems where they live. Elizabeth, what, what do you think of as key functions of the health system that you expect to be provided with? Um, I would expect a healthcare system to provide for uh, prevention, uh, maybe some media campaigns, and to also provide treatment, all of which um, has the aim of treating people who are uh, perhaps in vulnerable populations or are the worst off. So Elizabeth wants health systems to engage in preventive and promotive uh, activities. Uh, to do so in ways that protects the financial people from financial risk and pays particular attention to poor and marginalized people. And Rachel, what do you expect a health system to do? In addition to that, I think a health system should provide comprehensive emergency care and should also engage um, with communities to make sure they're responding to needs as they evolve. And Emily, how about you? Um, I think that the health system should make sure that all people feel like they can have access to care regardless of their background. Or, or perhaps ability to pay as well. So the World Health Organization has laid out a framework for thinking about the desired outcomes from a health system and the inputs it takes to achieve them as well as the way in which it hopes that those inputs will be combined. And let me talk about that for a, uh, a few minutes. I always, I always like to start with outcomes, so, so let's, let's look first at this side of the graphic. I mean, in a way, what we're really after is improved health of our people in, uh, in equitable ways. Now, in order to achieve that, 
we could say that the system needs to be responsive to the needs of the people and, and their social mores, that it has to provide social and financial risk protection, and that it should, and it should carry out its work in the most efficient and effective ways that are possible. Now, if, if this is what it's to uh, achieve, and here are some of the ways in which it's going to achieve them, which we can also think of as outcomes in a way, what are the inputs that we're combining? And in this World Health Organization framework, what we have is, uh, and I'm going to start at the bottom if I might, we have to have leadership and governance of the system, coupled with sound administration. The system has to raise money and be able to spend it effectively and efficiently. It has to have a health management information system so we know what we're doing, we can keep track of it, we can feed back that information, we can use that information to make good decisions. It has to have a health workforce that's hopefully in the right place at the right time with the right training uh, and that it's distributed properly across the country. We have to have uh, medical products, vaccines, diagnostics available in a timely way so that our health workforce can assist in ensuring that these are used effectively to enable good health of our people. And in a sense, we're trying to put all these together to provide services. As we put all these together to provide services in ways that achieve these outcomes, we have to be quite aware of the concerns for access and coverage. Are the facilities uh, and services accessible to people? Do they actually use them even when they're there? And what is the extent to which we're sure that these inputs are combined in ways that are of sufficient quality and safe so that they might actually enable these good outcomes as effectively, as efficiently, and as responsibly uh, as possible. Now, I, and, I, and I want to encourage you, as you think about different health systems, including perhaps the one in the country in which you live, to keep this framework in mind. I think it's very valuable for trying to assess the extent to which your health system or another health system is actually performing. Now let's look for a second at the way in which health systems are organized. It's really important to understand that every country in principle has a unique approach uh, to health. And every country in principle has taken account of its culture, its history, its background, uh, its social mores in designing uh, its health system. Now, Health systems can be categorized or typologized in many different ways, and I'm going to suggest to you a rather simplified approach to thinking about the way in which different health systems are organized. So, in principle, I want to suggest that you think about four or five factors as you look at different health systems, try to decide uh, how it is that they're organized, how it is that they seek to combine inputs to achieve the desired goals in effective and efficient ways? How do they provide risk protection? For whom do the uh, providers work? How, is their, how are their activities financed? Um, again, there are many different ways you might look at this. I might suggest that this is among the uh, simplest and easiest, but I encourage you to explore this further. But if you use this, you might come to um, the conclusion that there's something like four more or less types or categories of health systems. One, and it doesn't exist very much anymore, is an approach like the Cubans have, which is basically a system that's government-owned and government-operated. Another is more or less like the system of the United Kingdom, in which health is a human right, uh, the, the, the facilities are, uh, such as hospitals, are overwhelmingly uh, public uh, in their ownership, the insurance forms comes, in this case, through the national health system of the different parts of the United Kingdom. The money for that is raised largely through taxes. Uh, uh, and this might be called national uh, health service. There are also a number of countries that have built systems that, in some respects, uh, have come from the approach that the Germans began to take, actually, at the end of the 19th century. And here, you might call it national health insurance. Again, health is a human right. Uh, the vast majority of uh, facilities are public or not-for-profit if they're private. Uh, in this case, there are uh, insurers 
who usually represent a number of different organizations. In Germany, they might be workers' funds. In Japan, there's a large number of insurance firms. They generally have to work according to a common set of norms and standards that are agreed with government on a regular basis. Uh, some of times, um, in, in many of the countries, insurance will be financed through contributions from employers and employees, with the government using tax-based revenue, for example, to help pay for insurance premiums for people who may not be able to pay for them themselves, such as disabled people, unemployed people, uh, uh, it's, uh, or perhaps even pensioners. And examples of this might be France, Canada, Japan, or Germany. And last, you might call the last of these types of health systems one that's kind of pluralistic. And that is a system uh, in which there are many actors, um, some in the private sector, some in the public sector. Uh, actors who work for, uh, in many different ways uh, and uh, whose services are financed in a wide range of different manners uh, as well. And th probably the best examples of this would be, I mean, maybe the best of the high income countries for sure and almost unique would be the U United States. But in many respects, India and Nigeria have systems that don't look that different from the U.S. when you examine them along, along these lines. I want to remind you that this is highly, highly, highly simplified, but probably valuable as a way for thinking about the many different ways in which countries have sought to organize their health system, their health services, and the manner in which those are financed, as well as the way in which they support insurance for financial risk protection. Now, those working in health should also understand that health systems have traditionally been organized uh, into several different levels. And almost all of you uh, will know this. Usually we talk about the lowest level and the level that's closest to the client, as we might say, as the level of primary health care. And especially when we're thinking about low and middle income countries, but even more than that, we think about some of the services that would be offered at the primary health care level as family planning, maternal uh, health care, well baby care, the diagnosis and treatment of simple conditions, and the diagnosis and treatment as well in places where these are prevalent of malaria and TB. Now as you move up to the next level, and here by the way in, in the lowest income countries, you probably don't have a physician. You have a nurse or a nurse practitioner or, uh, or a, a community health worker perhaps even. Here at the secondary level you start having uh, a physician or more than one physician coupled with a nurse, a nurse practitioner equivalent or a nurse midwife. And at this level you, you can get access to these services but you can also get access to emergency obstetric care like a cesarean section, diagnosis and treatment of sick children and adult illnesses including ones more complicated than some of what they could treat here basic surgical services, and emergency care. And here is what we think of as tertiary level hospitals that can treat a variety of conditions that have a range of staff, including both general st uh, staff, such as physicians, general surgeons, et cetera. But in addition, they might also have a range of specialist specialists and specialist surgical services. So as you, again, almost everybody's familiar with this, even if they're not familiar with the terminology, but it's important to understand that health systems are by and large broken down into primary, secondary, and tertiary care. Now, it's also important to understand that the world has been thinking about primary care for a long time, and many countries for a long time have been thinking about primary care as well. And in 1978, there was a very famous global conference held in Alma-Ata, Kazakhstan, which is now called, I think, Almaty. In this conference, uh, the global community got together and talked about a what primary he health care might look like in an ideal state that served the needs of uh, people at the grassroots uh, effectively, efficiently, with due attention to poor people and marginalized people, and particular attention as well to the social determinants of health. And this conference led to a declaration, and everyone who works in global health understands this declaration of Alma-Ata. And some of the principles that were outlined there will show on this graphic. First, that primary health care 
Uh, and this is the primary health care movement, which talks about how the first level of care should be done. It doesn't talk about first, second, and third level. It talks about how primary health care should be done, that this should be done in ways that are essential and socially acceptable, that it should be linked to action on the key social determinants of health, that primary health care would be linked to other levels of health services through a referral system, that personnel who are sensitive to the needs of the community would staff primary health care services, that primary health care services of this type should provide preventive, promotive, curative, and rehabilitative services. They should address the needs of the community and be affordable. And they should be based on evidence and made universally available. And I think everyone will understand that um, in, in many respects, uh, the, the hope to achieve primary health care close to the client, especially in relatively poorer places, remains really central to the desires of everyone working in health, and in particular to the desires of those working in global health or working with low and middle income countries. And I want you to be aware that uh, as we speak, there's a new global primary health care performance initiative underway. This aims, among other things, to look at the data that's emerging from a wide range of countries on how they provide primary care, the outcomes they're able to achieve and at what cost in delivering primary health care as they do in the hopes of learning more and more that can be shared across countries so that they might continue to make their primary health care programs more effective, more efficient, and closer to this notion of the alma ata ideal than they would otherwise have. Now one could speak uh, much, much more about health systems. One could take one, two, or three classes, or courses, in fact, on health systems. But for now, I hope you have a better understanding than you did when we started of what a health system is, what the main functions of health systems are considered to be, how different kinds of health systems are organized in different countries, taking account of their unique and particular backgrounds, uh, how it is that we think of services being delivered at the first, second, and third level, and that you've also got a better understanding before of the notion of primary health care services as discussed at the famous Alma Ata conference and as people are still trying within many countries very hard to deliver. In the next session, we're going to explore health systems further by looking at some financing issues, the quest for universal health care, and how some health systems are addressing some of the critical issues that they face.